students welcome to fun learning in this video we are going to discuss about the bilateral stance as well as unilateral stance with no further delay let's get started first let us discuss about the bilateral stance under this heading we'll discuss two more subheading first one is nothing but sagittal plane analysis of bilateral stance second one is nothing but frontal plane analysis of bilateral stance first let us discuss about the sagittal plane analysis of bilateral stance under this subheading, you have to know something about line of gravity. When we stand, this line of gravity will either pass anterior to the joint or posterior to the joint. As in the case of hip joint, this line of gravity passes posteriorly. Since it is passing posteriorly, it produces gravitational extension moment. This has to be balanced. That is, this gravitational extension moment has to be balanced in order to maintain the equilibrium. As in the case of bilateral stance, the muscles are inactive, thus the stability is being provided by the anterior capsular ligamentous structure. Thus, in bilateral stance, equilibrium is maintained. So, first, in sagittal plane analysis, you have to remember that LOG passes posteriorly. Since it passed passing posteriorly, it produces a gravitational extension moment. Thus, in order to maintain the equilibrium, this gravitational extension moment has to be balanced. Since in bilateral stance, the muscles are inactive, the stability is being provided by the anterior capsular ligamentous structure. Now, let us move on to the frontal plane analysis of bilateral stance. Okay. The weight of your hat, which is nothing but head, arm and trunk. The weight of head, arm and trunk, which is nothing but two-third of your body weight, is being transmitted to your sacroiliac joint. From sacroiliac joint, this weight is equally transmitted to both your hip joint, that is right hip joint and your left hip joint. The weight of HAT is transmitted to both the right and left leg equally. That is WR is equal to WL. As the weight is equally transmitted, the moment arm is also equal. So what is the moment arm? Here, the moment arm is the distance between your line of gravity and your hip joint axis. As the weight is equally being transmitted, the moment arm of your right hip joint is equal to the moment arm of your left hip joint. Now, let us find out what is gravitational tack. Generally, torque now in the formula, force into momentum. Here, the force is nothing but the weight. So, the gravitational torque at the right hip joint is nothing but WR into MAR, which is nothing but weight which is being transmitted to your right hip joint into the moment arm at your right hip joint. Same, the gravitational torque at the left hip joint is nothing but WL into MAL. As I already said, I already said WL is equal to WR, MAL is equal to MAR. This two torque, that is the gravitational torque at the right hip joint and the gravitational torque at left hip joint are equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. As they act opposite to each other, this two, that is the gravitational torque of right hip joint and your left hip joint cancel out each other. Thus the answer is zero as it is acting opposite to each other. Okay, I hope so you understand till this. Now, the total joint compression is nothing but the compression that occurred due to the muscle activity plus the compressive force by your body weight. As I already said, as in the case of bilateral stance, the muscles are inactive. So, the compression which is being produced because of your muscle activity is zero, as in the case of bilateral stance. Thus, in bilateral stance, the compression at your hip joint is being provided completely by your body weight, that is of HAT. As muscles are inactive, no other force being acted on hip joint. Now, let us move on to an example. Okay, consider a person weights 875N. That is, its total weight is 875 Newton. First, you have to find out the weight of your head, arm and trunk, which is nothing but two-third of your body weight. So, 2 by 3 into, which is nothing but 875, the answer is 550N. As I said, equal amount of weight is being transmitted to your right hip joint and your left hip joint. That is, half of your HAT passes to the right hip joint and half of your HAT passes to your left hip joint. 
half into h80 which is nothing but 1 by 2 into 550 the answer is 275 n that is the 275 newton of weight is being transmitted to your right left light hip joint same 275 newton is being transmitted to your left hip joint now let us discuss about the unilateral stance as in the case of unilateral stance the person stands with the help of single limb alone whereas the other limb has been elevated from the ground in this space there is only single limb support and there is increase in hip joint compression from body weight as a person move from bilateral stance to unilateral stance which is more complex as I already said, in unilateral stance, the person stands with the help of a single limb alone, whereas the other limb has been elevated. Here, the left leg has been elevated. The weight is transmitted to the ground only via the right leg. Because of the elevation of your left leg creates an adduction torque around the weight-bearing hip joint. This adduction torque has to be balanced by the abduction torque, which is going to be produced by the abductor muscle. Thus, the total joint compression is nothing but compression force by your body weight plus compression because of the abductor muscle. Now, let us find out the weight acting on a right leg, which is nothing but HAT plus weight of left leg. HAT is nothing but head, arm and trunk. The weight of head, arm and trunk constitute about 2 by 3rd of the body weight. Upper balance 1 by 3 is nothing but weight of both the limb. Okay, wow. Now, in the case of the weight of left leg, then 1 by 3 is the body. Then 1 by 3 divided by 2. Answer is 1 by 6 of your body weight. Add the 2 by 3rd of your body weight plus 1 by 6 body weight. So, if you add the LCM, add 5 by 6 of the body weight. Then weight acting on right leg is nothing but 5 by 6 of the body weight. Now, now uh, let us solve an example. Here the person weight 120 pound. First number weight of right leg which is nothing but 5 by 6 of the body weight. So body weight 120 substitute panna, answer 100 pound. Next one gravitational torque. Gravitational torque or the formula is nothing but force into momentum. In a force nothing but body weight into momentum. So, body weight in 5 by 6 of the body weight, answer is 100. So, you have to remember, gravitational torque momentum is 0.1 substitute. Whereas, abductor torque momentum is 0.05 substitute. So, gravitational torque momentum is 0.1. Then, you have to substitute 0.1 substitute. Then, answer is 10 Newton meter. Then, gravitational torque is nothing but 10 Newton meter. Now, the gravitational torque equal to abductor torque. And the abductor torque is equal in order to balance the gravitational torque. Now, the formula of abductor torque formula is force into momentum. Now, we have abductor force. So, abductor torque is equal to gravitational torque. Now, we have abductor torque is equal to 10 substitute. Into force. In the momentum, abductor talk line, momentum substitute panna sonne na 0.05 substitute panna sonne. Apo, in the 0.05 nama substitute panna abdi na, force enna answer valid, abductor force enna answer valid na, 200 newton meter abdi na answer valid. Okay, ma, apo, total joint compression enna na, body weight compression plus abductor muscle oda compression, which is nothing but 200 plus 100, answer is 300 newton. Okay, ma, ippo, body weight enna kudutthi irukkanga 120, total hip joint compression enna a irukku, 300 a irukku. Apo, weight a vidar 2 to 3 times adhigama enna irukku na, total joint compression irukku. Our total hip joint compression are generally found to be 2 to 3 times body weight in unilateral stance. If total joint compression in unilateral stance is approximately 3 times the body weight, a loss of 1 newton of body weight will reduce the joint reaction force by 3 newton. For painful hip joint, weight loss is a better option. If less muscular counter torque is needed to offset the effect of gravity, there will be a decrease in the amount of muscular compression across the joint. Some compression reduction strategy occur automatically but at a cost of extra energy expenditure and structural stress. Other strategies such as assistive device can minimize the energy cost. 
Now let us discuss about the compensatory radial lean of the trunk. As I said previously, the gravitational torque is equal to the abduction torque. Right. Apo, if we reduce the gravitational torque, then automatically abduction torque also reduces. As in the case of compensatory radial lean, the person lean towards the side of pain or weakness in order to reduce the distance between your line of gravity and the hip joint axis. If the distance between the line of gravity and the hip joint axis decreases, then the momentum decreases. If the momentum decreases, then the gravitational torque decreases. If the gravitational torque decreases, then automatically abduction torque will also get decreased. But this compensatory rate of lean require high energy expenditure and would result in excessive wear and tear on the lumbar spine. Now let us move on to an example. Here the example is nothing but here the person weights about 825 Newton. Okay, wow. so first the gravitational torque, the formula is nothing but force into momentum. Force is nothing but 5 by 6 of your body weight. 5 by 6 body weight is nothing but 825 Newton. Into here the person leans towards one side. Upon momentum decreases. Here the momentum is nothing but 0 0.025. Upon we have to substitute 0 0.025 as a momentum. And we get answer as 17.2 Newton meter. Now we have to find out the abductor force. Thus, abduction torque is equal to force into momentum. As I said previously, as I said already, the gravitation torque is equal to the abduction torque. We can substitute the abduction torque as 17.2 into force into here the momentum remains the same, which I said previously 0 0.05. By using this, you get force as 343.75 Newton. So, total joint compression is nothing but compression because of your body weight plus the abductor muscle load of compression. Okay, ma. so compression because of your body weight, you have to find out by 5 by 6 into body weight, uh, which is nothing but 5 by 6 into 825. The answer is 687.5 plus abductor muscle produced by the compression is nothing but 343.75. If you add up together, you get 1031.25. If the same sum is done by the method which we done previously in the bilateral stance, sorry, in the unilateral stance, you get answer as 2062.5. This 50% reduction in joint compression may be enough to relieve some of the pain symptoms experienced by a person with arthritic changes in the hip joint or to provide some relief to a painful or weak abductor. But a rate lean of the trunk during walking uses more energy and may result in stress changes within the lumbar spine if used over an extended time period. Use of a cane offers a realistic alternative to the hip pain or weak. Now let us discuss about use of a cane ipsilaterally. So here what they are trying to say is the 15% of the body weight is transmitted to the ground via the cane. The proportion of body weight that passes through the cane will not pass through the hip joint and will not create an adduction torque around the supporting hip joint. Now let us move on to an example. Here the person weight about 825 Newton. As I already said, 15% of body weight is transmitted to the ground via the cane. So 825 to 15% now we got the answer is 123.75. Weight of right leg as per the formula 5 by 6 of the body weight, we got the answer is 687.5 Newton. Now, in order to find out the weight that has been transmitted uh, to the ground via your right hip joint, is you have to minus this both. So, you got the answer is 563.75. Now, the same method, you have to find out the gravitational torque. Then, with the help of the gravitational torque, you have to find out the abductor force. So, total joint compression is nothing but compressive force because of your body weight plus the compressive force which is being produced by your abductor muscle. The answer is 1691.35 Newton. This answer is quite a more when you compare this to the compensatory rate of lean. But when you use compensatory rate of lean for a prolonged period of time, that may result in wear and tear kind of injury at your lumbar spine. So you can use this use of a cane ipsilaterally in order to reduce small amount in order to reduce the pain at your hip joint. Now let us move on to a use of a cane contralaterally. Now 
Now let us discuss about use of acane contralaterally. Same as that of use of acane ipsilaterally. Fifteen percentage of the body weight is transmitted to the ground via the cane. However, the cane is now substantially farther from the painful supporting hip joint. Now the cane, in addition to relieving some of the superimposed body weight, the cane is now in a position to assist the abductor muscle in providing a counter torque to the torque of gravity. Now let us move on to an example. Uh, so here same the person weight about 825 Newton. As I said 15 percentage of body weight is transmitted to the ground through the cane. So 825 to 15 percentage abdina which is nothing but 123.75 Newton. Weight of right leg same formula 5 by 6 of the body weight which is nothing but 5 by 6 into 825. The answer is 687.5. Now the weight that has been transmitted uh, via the right hip joint to the ground is nothing but the subtraction of this board. The answer is 563.75 Newton. Gravitational torque same force into momentum which is nothing but 563 into 75 into 0 0.1. Answer is 56.38 Newton. Now as I, uh, as I said here the cane is going to produce an torque. The cane generate an opposing abduction torque which is nothing but body weight into momentum so the amount of body weight which has been transmitted to the ground via the cane is nothing but 123.75 newton into the momentum here is 0 0.5 so when you multiply this two we will get the answer is 61.88 newton meter here the torque which has been generated by the cane exceeds the gravitational torque Cane torque exceeds the gravitational torque. If the cane completely offset the gravitational torque, then there is no need of hip abductor muscle force. Thus, the total hip joint compression is equal to the compression which is being produced only by your body weight, which is nothing but 56, 563.75. 56.375 and there is no abductor muscle force. Okay, so we'll get a better result when we use cane contralaterally when compared to the use of a cane ipsilaterally. With this, I'm completing today's video. Thanks for watching. If you like my video, please subscribe to my channel. Stay home, stay safe.